High power surge from the power grid or a lightning strike can cause major issues in an irrigation system by damaging wire, the irrigation controller, or devices in the ground like solenoids and two-wire decoders. Proper grounding offers excess electrical power the most effective and safest route from a controller or wire path back to the ground by way of a grounding rod or grounding plate. Proper grounding and testing can save hours of labor and thousands of dollars in repairs if a high power surge were to occur. In this video, we'll cover typical grounding specifications, two-wire decoder system grounding, Hunter ICD decoder grounding, using the dual S surge module in grounding setups, testing grounding hardware, and test equipment setup. Each manufacturer has a set of specifications for grounding controllers and devices in the field. We'll break this down into two categories, conventionally wired systems and two wire decoder systems. When working with a conventionally wired irrigation system, you should ground the controller using 10 gauge or five millimeter squared copper wire from the controller to the grounding hardware. In the controller, the 10 gauge or five millimeter squared wire will be inserted into the grounding lug built into the irrigation controller. The other end of the wire should be connected to an 8-foot or 2.5-meter copper-clad steel ground rod or a suitable copper plate sufficient to achieve 10 ohms or less of resistance. These devices should be installed at least 8 feet or 2.5 meters away from the controller and the wire path exiting the controller. On a two-wire decoder system, earth grounding is a pivotal part of the installation that requires planning and careful installation. Properly grounded decoder systems perform very well, even in regions with frequent lightning storms. Poor grounding often results in unnecessary equipment losses and irrigation downtime. A large ground lug, or clamp, is provided for connection of bare copper wire to earth grounding hardware. Install the grounding wire and earth ground hardware at right angles from the two-wire paths when possible. Decoder installations also require earth grounding in the two-wire path itself to protect the decoder investment. The ICD family of decoders features integrated surge suppression, and each decoder module is equipped with a bare copper wire for connection to earth ground hardware. Earth ground should be connected at every 12th decoder, or 1,000 feet, 300 meters of wire run, whichever is shorter. The station size of the decoders is not considered for grounding purposes. Every 12th decoder is the rule. The final decoder in any wire run should be grounded. This includes the final decoders in each of the different arms of a T if the arm is more than 500 feet, 150 meters. Easy decoders do not include integrated surge suppression because inline earth grounding is not required along the two wire path with the easy decoder system. If you're in a high lightning area and want to ensure the life of your hardware, you can use the dual S surge arrestor with easy decoders. The ground wires on intervening ICD decoders are not used. It is not necessary to remove the unused ground wire or bury it. Simply fold them out of the way. This allows future additional grounding or use of the decoder in another location. Decoder grounding hardware should always be connected and placed at right angles to the run of the two-wire path. Using a separate bonding wire in the trench between all grounded decoder points is not required but can dissipate surge energy and help prevent pipe damage in a lightning strike. To ground the decoder or dual surge module, you should install an 8-foot or 2.5-meter copper-clad steel ground rod or a suitable copper plate sufficient to achieve 10 ohms or less of resistance perpendicular from the two-wire path. Testing your grounding hardware is a necessary step in your grounding installation process. To test your hardware, you'll need an earth ground resistance tester such as those made by Xtech, Megger, or AEMC. In this video, we'll be using the Xtech Earth Resistance Tester Kit. As mentioned in our specifications for grounding, we'll be looking for a reading of 10 ohms or less. To test the ground resistance, we'll start by setting up our Xtech Ground Resistance Tester. Start by removing the testing kit, grounding tees, and red, green, and yellow leads from the storage pouch. Unwind all the cables and plug them into the correct spot on the meter. If you look at the top of the meter, you'll see three colored slots, a red, 
a yellow, and a green. Match the cable color to the corresponding slot. We first need to do a zero adjustment of earth resistance ranges. Set the function selector switch to the desired measurement range, 20, 200, or 2000 ohms. Short the three test leads together by clipping them all to a single earth ground rod. Press the test key. Use the zero adjust knob to adjust the displayed reading to zero, zero, zero. Press the test key again to enter the zero adjustment process. Perform this adjustment for each range. Connect the three test leads to the meter as follows. Green lead to the E terminal, green jack. Yellow lead to the P terminal, yellow jack. And red lead to the C terminal, red jack. Set the meter's function switch to the desired resistance range. Drive the auxiliary earth bars into the ground. Align the bars an equal distance apart to the existing earth ground rod connection and in a straight line as shown in the diagram. If the auxiliary bars are placed in close proximity to the ground stick, measurement inaccuracies will result. Minimum distance between rods should be no less than 10 feet or 3 meters. Connect the alligator clip end of the test leads to the earth bars and existing ground rod connection as shown. Green lead to the existing ground rod. The yellow lead to one earth bar. The red lead to the other earth bar. Set the meter's function switch to the desired resistance range, 20, 200, or 2000 ohms. Zero the range as described in the zero adjustment procedure earlier. Press the test button. The icon will flash and the audible signal will sound. Note the displayed reading. If high resistance is detected, note the value and take appropriate steps to correct the ground connection if necessary. Press the test key to end the test. Readings of 1 ohm are typical when the test leads are not connected to the meter. The hold function freezes the latest measurement reading on the LCD. Press the hold key to freeze the reading on the LCD. Press the hold key again to exit the hold function. The hold function does not retain measurement data if the meter is turned off. Proper grounding of irrigation controllers and two-wire paths on decoder systems will help to dissipate high-voltage surges, such as those caused by lightning strikes. Installing grounding hardware and measuring its resistance with the ground test equipment can verify that the hardware can do its job when called upon. Periodic testing of the earth ground resistance is a best practice to ensure the ground is still to specifications and help protect expensive electronic components.